Hi and welcome, it's Ruth here at artfulstamping.co.uk Today I'm going to be trying to stamp on directly onto designer series paper. This is from the In Good Taste designer series paper pack. It's a double pack, you get 24 sheets in this kit and yeah, when you see them you'll kind of understand why there are so many because they are such fantastic neutral kind of designs that you can use them again and again and again for different things so this one is the sheet that has the wood on one side and then the it's like it's supposed to be like texture paint you know a bit like you know like the other day when I did the texture painting really so I've decided to use that and I want to use the sunflowers I'd like to have some sunflowers in in around and I also want to maybe do a little bit of watercolory painting to start off with so we'll see how that goes I'm not sure whether or not I should really gesso the page first but we'll try without and then we'll go go from there so hi everybody welcome now I don't have my second device on me so I'm gonna have to just keep looking up at the screen to check to see who's uh, commenting because uh, my daughter's using it to chat to her cousin or her gaming, her gaming friends at the moment. So this is Bumblebee. And I've just got a little glass of water here and an old, this is like pre-stamping up old aqua paint brush. It's just the only brush I had to hand. So it, it doesn't have to be of any significant quality. It basically needs to be able to pick up water and and wet the ink. Oops, I've already done a blob there, but never mind. Okay, so I just want to blob on some colour. And yeah, I can see already that because it hasn't got gesso on this page, the colour just soaks directly in. So, and I'm just wanting to put blobs kind of in a, in a circle. That's what I'm kind of aiming for. And I'm not, look, I'm being so messy. I don't really, I don't know what I'm doing. If anyone knows what I'm doing, please let me know. <laughs> this is just blobbing for art's sake. Uh, we'll see. Oh my goodness. I'm just chuckling to myself at how ridiculous this is, but I know it'll be fine. I know it'll be fine. <laughs> there we go. Blobity blob, blob, blob. <laughs> I just want to use up all the ink now. Wet the paper lightly first. I don't know that that would make much of a difference because, to be honest, it is soaking in. As soon as that water hits, I've literally got a second Martina. Um, so it just goes to show that this is a type of paper that's quite porous. Uh, it's it's the Stampin' Up! scrapbooking paper. It is quite... Uh, what's the word? It's thick, but it's porous. So I guess if you want a... A look where it just sort of sits on the top then you do need to gesso first there's a lady I follow on YouTube who does a lot of watercolor kind of bits and pieces like this and she always gessos so okay so I've got this kind of remainder bit of ink here so I'm just gonna splatter just get some of this ink and splatter it across my page um, I might get my heat tool out just to dry off some of this but it doesn't it really, really doesn't need a lot to dry it. It's it's barely damp. So there we go. I've done it so that you know. <laughs> I'll make a mess of my artwork first for you guys. <laughs> In the name of art. <laughs> so we'll just dry that off. Yes, it is a bit wrinkly, but hey ho. It already looks wrinkly, to be honest, because of the canvas. You know, it's... It looks like painted canvas. So. Some of it is seeped through, look, you see there. But the idea is that it is meant to look textured, so. So I want it just dry enough so that when I do stamp on the top, it's not going to seep. I, I still want a really nice crisp image. 
So I pulled, if I go through the colours that I pulled out while I'm drying this, these are what I pulled out. So these are all the in colours at the moment. Rococo Rose, Magenta Madness, Terracotta Tile, Cinnamon Cider and Bumblebee. I have all my in colours sitting on top of my caddy, you see, they're all together. And I divided them up into kind of like warms and cool colours the other day. So I just literally grabbed that section and thought, yeah, let's just play with those. Let's see, see what happens. Right, that's cool. There we go. I'm just going to clean up my little bit of mess on the side here because knowing me, I will stick my hand in it and end up with a yellow. Thank you. Yeah, they are pretty colours, aren't they? Right, so I usually approach the kind of stamping of wreaths in a couple of different ways. One is to perhaps start with a, a bit of a background, a couple, couple of background images, and then stamp the sunflower, uh, whatever your flowers are on top. So I think I will do that. I will go back in with Bumblebee because I've got this stamp set out here with this beautiful leaf. I may use some other stamp sets. It's just some, you know, these jumped out at me. So I thought I'd have a play with these first see where it takes us and then go from there so so this is a lovely maiden hair fern And it is stamping on really nicely. I'm just looking at the the bleed. No, there's hardly any bleed because the paper is so fine. It is almost like stamping onto our cardstock. Not obviously the same, but it's uh, pretty good. So I'm trying to alter the directions I'm stamping these. So this just creates your kind of base for the rest of the wreath. It's a bit like if you ever were to make a wreath in real life, it, it you know, you always put your kind of your foliage bits down first. So that's how that kind of works. I'm actually tempted to grab something else textury to put in the background. Um What about this gorgeous one here? This new one from Textures Essentials. Again with the bumblebee. Okay, that's nice. It just helps to kind of create that base on which we're going to put everything else so how is everybody today lovely to have you with me yes I know it's a bit earlier in the day but um, I just had this moment to play and I thought I'd get on here and do a little bit of playing with you guys it's funny I showed my daughter that one sheet wonder that I did the other day this one she was like I like the pink. Ooh, I don't like the brown. <laughs> I was like, ooh, don't like that. I was like, oh, okay. It's funny, isn't it? I think children are very definite, aren't they, at that age, about what colours they like and what colours they don't like. It, they don't kind of think, ooh, combinations. It's just they have a very kind of gut reaction, don't they, to colours. Hi, Aisha. Lovely to see you. Oh, thank you.
Right, I don't think I'm going to do stamping off just yet. I, I, I really like the full strength of this cinnamon cider on here. And there's this lovely smaller sunflower here. Oop. Hi Janine. So I'm trying not to make it symmetrical, but I do want it kind of balanced. So. Do three up in that corner there. Be it for the sunflowers. Let's get some of these leaves in here as well. Ah, that's good. I do like doing wreaths. Um, I've only started doing them in the last few months. And now I look at every flower stamp I have and go, oh, what can I, can I put that in a wreath? Will it work in a wreath? I, I have to admit, I look at all these beautiful floral wreaths, you know, you know, there's loads of pictures of floral wreaths on Pinterest and uh, I have a friend who's a florist uh, who lives in near me and she has a shop in town and she does these beautiful flower arrangements and I'd love to be able to do all that. I love flowers, but I can't afford to buy all those flowers. Mind you, it's because I spend the money on stamps probably. But um, the great thing about a stamp is that once you've got it, um, you can create as many as you want and they never die. <laughs> so that's the lovely thing about reeds that I've, or stamping reeds that I've discovered. But, um, they're really easy to transport as well. You can uh, just pack them up and send them off or frame them. So, right. Um, I want to add some more other colours into this now. So we've only just used, so if you're somebody who, you know, would stop there, you could, you could just stop there and that would be it. And I've literally just used those two colours, Bumblebee and uh, Cinnamon Cider. What are my plans for the fin finished project? I've got no idea just yet, to be honest. No idea. Okay, I want some smaller, smaller flowers to go in here now. So, um... Just going to have a look at my shelf and see what I have. Um, smaller flowers is an area I'm lacking in now. After we've said goodbye to so many stamps recently. Uh, oh my goodness. Gonna have to be creative. 
I think it might just have to be leaves that we really um oh that one might be useful I wonder if just to focus on the leaves Quite a different design. That might work actually. I thought that was too big, but it is a very different texture, so it might be okay. I know what, I might audition it. Do you know what I mean by audition it? Okay, so this is what you can do if you're a bit scared to uh, try something out. This is something that, an idea I came up with the other day that I think I shared with you, uh, I think I called it tips and tricks or something, but I want to do a whole video about this, the idea of, being, of stamping things out first and trying them out. I think it would, could look okay. Got a couple there. A couple there. Should we just go for it? Should we be brave? Hi Eileen. You have three sets. Oh good. How exciting. Okay, so this stamp, I, I used to really struggle with it because I didn't like the the positive and the negative aspect of it, but I discovered that if you stamp and twist and stamp again, uh, I prefer it so much more. It's That's just me. Okay, so can you see how you then lose that kind of real stark positive-negative effect of it? Okay. I might be able to fit a three here. Okay, so this has ended up being a little bit autumnal, which is fine. I do have some um, Canadian ladies what, uh, who watch my channel. Um, I think Gina? Is Gina Canadian? She's not always able to get on lives, but... Um... Oh, there we go, Jen. Who did you buy your Stampin' Up! products from? Sorry, I've forgotten your name. Aisha. Sorry, Aisha. I must try and remember that. Aisha, Aisha. Such a pretty name. 
Okay, so this is a feather, and I just feel like because I've used terracotta tile in those those areas there, I need to balance it up by using it somewhere else. So let's just have this lovely little feather poking out in different places. If you don't follow Young's Paper Creations, if you like uh, things like, um, oh, how would you describe what you make, Aisha? Um, they're like scrapbooking notebooks, but oh, they're just gorgeous. They're like a really like fun um, notebook made from scrapbooking papers, and all, oh, it's just fabulous. Just and very textured and just really interesting. Uh, do go and follow Aisha because um, she has some lovely things on her channel and also she does these lovely kind of encouraging um, messages as well which is so much needed in this the current, well just everyone needs a bit of encouragement. Jour yes, like a, that's it, junk journal, that's it. Oh you're now a demonstrator, oh fantastic, oh congratulations. Okay, so those are the f some feathers that have gone in there. I do want to put more leaves. So I'm thinking... Yeah, maybe some of those, but I want it in pink. I know I'm a bit crazy for this, but I'm just going to do it. Oh, that just works. It's so subtle. I don't know if you guys can actually see that, but it just works so well. See that? This is Rococo Rose. Oh, indeed. I know what you mean. Yeah, feeling like a small fish in a big pond. But you know what? It's all about finding the other little fishes that you get on with. <laughs> yeah. YouTube's a very big place and uh, you you just got to keep being true to what you do. Because then the people who like what you do will follow you. You know, you don't want everybody to follow you because not everybody's going to like what you do. So I've, you know, got to be consistent and, you know, just share the things that I love doing. And, you know, I've ended up with just these amazing artists and demonstrators and card makers and whatever, who just all kind of like meet together here, which is just lovely. So if you're new to my channel, please do say hello. If it's the first time on the live, do say hello. Uh, if it's the first time you've ever come across uh, my channel please do subscribe stick around for a few weeks see if you like what I do you know I, I'm not offended if you want to unsubscribe if you realize mm, no it's not for me it's okay um, I'd rather you just you know got content into your inbox that you enjoyed but do you know if you want to get to know people do say hello and um do join also Artful Stampin' Space, which is my Facebook group for people who go off and create something, you know, after watching what I've done and they want to go and create and share what they've done. Okay, I feel like we need to bring some more pink in and I'm looking at the centres of these sunflowers going, hmm, they're looking a bit bare. So... Oh, 
There's this stamp here. Let's see how big that is. That fits in the middle. So I at this point I just kind of think shapes. I think I need I need some a blob that size to fill that in. So what I, I'll be doing now is looking at my other stamp sets that perhaps have got moons, have got yeah, moons are usually the one uh, that can fit inside something like that. There we go, perfect. I call this faux colouring in. Who needs to colour in when you've got a stamp that'll do it? And it's not even from the same stamp set. That's from Inspiring Iris. But um, this is not to say you've got to go out there and buy this stamp set. You've just got to look at what you've got already. Uh, so the other one I'm thinking of is Mountain Air. See, look, I've got a nice moon in there. And actually, I'm going to use the textured moon side because I don't want a whole solid colour. I just want hints of it. Actually, I'm not sure I like the rim, but never mind, I've done it now. Let's see if I can clean up the rim of it. We've got this kind of like line going around the moon, which I'm not too keen on. Oh well. <laughs> Salavi. Hi Linda. Hi, Teresa, Carol, lovely to see you. Sorry if I've not seen you, if you've come in, um, if you said hi, because I'm, I'm only on the one device, so I have to keep looking at the screen and looking at what I'm doing. You're struggling with choices of ink selection. Okay, uh, what what colours are you drawn to in life? That's what I would, That's where I would start. What colours make you happy? Right, so the only colour I've not used yet is Magenta Madness. <laughs> this is going to be fun. I'm wondering whether to go a bit darker and do Magenta in there. I just do it. An open leaf. What do you mean, Linda? Okay, I might just stamp this off. Oh yeah, okay. I'm, I'm alright with that. I can cope with that. Oh, I know what you mean. You mean like a drawn leaf. Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, to be honest, these leaves here are so... Um, they're the distinctive stamps. So... They never end up looking as dark as you think they're going to, which is great. So I think I might just about get away with it. I'll test it out. You know what, I'll stamp it off to start off with. I thought you would have said the colours that would go with most of the other colours. Oh! <laughs> um, no, I, it, it depends. Okay, let's start. Here's a question. Have you got any Stampin' Up! colours already? That's, that's the point to start from. You know, if, if, you're, if you're new to Stampin' Up! in general and you don't have any of the colours, then 
that's one discussion and then if you have got some then um, that's another discussion but they're random okay so it's probably worth then looking getting the catalogue and ticking off physically ticking off what you have already And then perhaps making a list, you know, so yellows, greens, blues, reds, um, yellow, green, blues, reds, oranges. So then kind of categorise them and, and look at the gaps at what you haven't got. And then also look at, you know, if you've got crushed curry, then I wouldn't buy bumblebee. If you've got shaded spruce, I wouldn't buy just jade. Um, if you've got... Um, if you've got Rococo Rose, I wouldn't buy Blushing Bride, you know, you know, so look at the colours that are look like they're lighter versions of another one. Um, and that way you'll kind of eliminate all the ones that you don't desperately need right now. You can get, you know, add them to your collection as you go along. So. Okay, I actually like the full strength pink. It's it's bringing a kind of vibrancy and um, just something really fresh to the the look of this. Okay, take care. Lovely to see you. Um, I need one over here, don't I? Yeah, the magenta works, doesn't it? I'm thinking now just to do the splatters in the pink, a dark pink, and then that will just help bring it all together. Um, So with the splatters, I'm actually looking for areas that that are where the flowers overlap. And I almost want to use the splatters as a distraction that the images are overlapping. Because obviously in real life, the flowers would just overlap each other. You wouldn't have a, they wouldn't be see-through. Uh, but because it's stamping, you, you're obviously going to get an overlap. But by putting the sprinkles there it it sort of disguises it <laughs> that's what I'm hoping anyway so see where these are crossing over here and then also around the edges and hi Esther hi Christine And it is really nice having this patterned paper. I mean, all this white, this is all the paper, this texture here, which is super fun. So you've got all the benefits of the texture without it being textured. You know, you can stamp your stamp cleanly. You get a good image on there and it looks great. There we go. I think I'm done. Wow, that's a record. So five minutes to get a, a wreath done. I think it helps when the uh, images are quite big. Um, I'm tempted to go back in with um, something else to do those. I'm going to see if I've got another circle. Oh, 
Oh yes, look, there's a there's a moon or sun, whatever you want to call it, in waterfront. Ah, oh, yes. just felt like it needed to have more of a contrast between the centre and the leaves. Sorry, petals, not leaves. Remember this is art, it's not real life. So. Thank you guys. And because we put down some of that, you know, the bumblebee with the paint, if you got you guys who were right from the beginning of this, if you didn't see the beginning of what I've done, then it's worth going back and checking. Um, I just got some bumblebee ink on a block with some water and I just sort of painted on some of the colour. And it's nice because some of these petals have got colour in them and some haven't and um, it looks great. Yes this is a 12 by 12 piece of paper so this is scrapbooking paper and it's from the In Good Taste designer series paper pack so you get a variety of different backgrounds and so I've looked at all the kind of the paler ones and thought oh I can I can see myself stamping on these because, you know, imagine one on the wood. That's, um, that's super fun. Ooh, that one's interesting with the pink. So with this one with the pink, uh, if we're going to do a wreath or something on that, we'd have to go quite dark, I think. We could go dark purples. <gasps> we could do that, couldn't we? Dark purple flowers. So... The way you use products, Ruth, is so different than anyone else. Concentrating on just enjoying the process of stamping and making actual card making process less stressful. Absolutely, darling. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I try and try and do. That's lovely, isn't it? That word. I really want to tidy up. I've got this area to the back of me that you guys get to see when I chat. And it is such a mess. I know it's a mess. I, it's, I have a basket with like documents in it that are kind of semi-important documents that I kind of go, yeah, I'll just, I'll put it there so I know where it is. But really, what would be really good, what would be, yeah, super cool would be for me to actually um, sort it out and <laughs> file it away. Um, so this whole area here, I want to just make it neat and tidy and maybe get some cardboard boxes and then I was thinking of using that lovely designer series paper and putting those on the front so it just looks like wooden boxes lined up there so that is a project oh hello <laughs> that's a project I'd like to to do at some point so uh or maybe I should just stamp flowers I should put that on the front of my <laughs> just there yeah, this whole area just needs tidying. I've got stuff here that shouldn't even be here. I mean, who wants to tidy up when there's fun stamping to do? Right, let's go through then what I've used. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy Wednesday afternoon. I forgot what day it was then. So the main flower stamps, or the main stamp used today are celebrate sunflowers sorry that's reverse now for you but anyway it's celebrate sunflowers are the feather the leaf 
and the flower so those from positive thoughts the forever fern which is just a must have now it it's a bit like beautiful friendship it's like <laughs> Oh dear, I can live without some flower stamps while I've got this, I think, <laughs> just about. And then in addition, oh I didn't end up using Beautiful Friendship at all, did I? Okay, no I didn't use that. I did use that one from Textured Essentials, but it's not essential. <laughs> I know it says Textured Essentials, but no, it wasn't essential for this piece of work. I didn't end up using the daisies, I'll put that away. Uh, waterfront I just use the the dot there inspiring iris I did use that flower initially but you can live without it you don't have to have that one to do this it's really those I'd say definitely you need that one and then either I mean you could have instead of doing a feather and that leaf there you could have used that instead and then, you know, some sort of texture for the background. Or just do more kind of splodging, you know. There we go. Right, are there any questions? If there are no more questions, I will let you get on with your day. And I will get on with mine. And um, please give me a thumbs up. Lovely to have you with me. And if you like what I do, please do subscribe. Share it out with your friends. You know, if this is something that you've never seen before and you think... Oh, I know just the person who'd like to see that then please do share it with them it's always lovely to welcome new folks oh and then today we also did the audition your stamps you know if you want to you're not sure whether to add it stamp onto some vellum and cut it out and pop it onto your piece of artwork then keep these pieces with the stamp set because now you've stamped it it's it's there I just want to check it's dry not quite dry yet. I'll leave them out for a little bit longer. I might heat, heat them actually. Um, so just remember when you're stamping on vellum, it takes much longer for it to dry. So either, you know, put your heat on it, let it or let it sit out and then store it with your stamp sets so that you can audition, audition them as you need to on your pieces of work. So... Or plastic sheet, yes. So if you do it on plastic sheet, maybe you, you might want to use stays on. Just be aware with photopolymer stamps, because I nearly went to do that with my photopolymer yesterday. Um, you can get stays on ink off with the stays on cleaner, but it's not recommended that you use stays on with photopolymer. I have, I have, I have, then use the cleaner and then wash them. Now that's not an official recommendation that's an unofficial recommendation so i stampin up don't recommend you use stays on on photopolymer but if you have to if you feel you want to wash it off immediately get you, you must have the stays on cleaner wash it you know do it wash it off i don't know what it might do to your photopolymer stamps that's the only you know that's my disclaimer i, do, I don't know what happens um mine haven't melted so, <laughs> there we go. You're welcome, Cindy. Yeah, stamping up cell 12 by 12 sheets of the clear plastic. Uh, however, you know, when you're unpacking, like, I've just bought some dyes recently, and it comes in this, like, clear film plastic packaging. Oh, I don't know if I've got some in my bin to show you. Uh, but that is pretty sturdy. You could use that. You know, it doesn't have to be expensive stuff i have a wonderful extraordinary beautiful texture stamp now but i will just the essential ones martina you're welcome janine lovely to see you thank you darlene lovely to see you too who else have i forgotten to say hello to i said hello to jen i think i said hello to jen i'll tidy up you do it for a job you declutter by tray oh do you vanessa yeah. you'd have a job in my house <laughs> I'm not too bad when I put my mind to it I'm quite good it's just putting my mind to it I, it only happens like once a month for me 
so I, I have to focus on one area and then it's done and then I'll move on to the next right lovely to see you guys take care oh it's it's the cleaner that eats the way at the stamp hi Lynn oh welcome okay so just immediately wash wash it off hi Anna okay so if you do have to use the stays on cleaner wash it off immediately yeah the other thought I did have sorry to go on um was that in some situations like for example I've just bought this stamp set I actually find it easier to line up when I've got a dark ink on the stamp so I'm wondering actually would it be easier to put black stays on on here and yeah just a thought yeah oh congratulations Lynn welcome to Stampin' Up um that's okay if you want to be uh, be notified of when I go live just hit the bell button on the uh, YouTube subscribe bit if you use whatsapp please email me ruthtrice at gmail.com and I will add you to the whatsapp broadcast list so that means that uh, it's just me that gets your phone number nobody else gets your phone number and I add you to a special list and when I go live I send you a message and you then get a ping on your phone to say Ruth's gone live so use I know use any red ink tell me about it I just used a little bit of pink on on this one yesterday and it's already a bit pink I oh, know take care Margaret lovely to see you right thanks for joining me guys have an inspired day go create lots of love bye